you see that? Do you think that fish will taste good? It's seven, eight foot long. Just don't get uh, caught. What's happening, you guys? My name is David Chambers. Thanks for watching. That right there, I bought at Rule King. It's like a little fish gig. Um, super cheap. It's like 10 bucks, something like that. But it didn't come with a pole. So I found this thing. It was like a net that I tore the head off because it was like a useless torn net. It was just a rod. And the reason that I'm using this rod, I was going to use like a shovel, like one of those wooden kind of yard tool, like a shovel handle, you know? But it was just too heavy. And I want my gig to be a lot heavier than this rod so that when I throw it, the gig kind of leads it to wherever I'm aiming to. So I'm just gonna kind of shove that on there. All right. Imagine that is a giant mudfish or a gar or who knows what the heck's out there. It's gonna be right there and Pwah! I missed it. But you get the point. <laughs> Sun was in my eyes. You guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, do me a favor and subscribe and hit that little bell just so you're notified whenever I upload. But hey, let's go get some whatever the heck we find. That right there is a nice coffee, which is like an essential for an afternoon fish spearing excursion. I don't know about you guys, but like walking down to a fishing spot is just one of the most exciting things in the world for me. <laughs> Look how awesome this place is, you guys. It's like you're in the middle of a jungle. I mean, I am in the middle of a jungle. So I was like, I was walking like right here one time, right? And I'm walking, looking down and stuff. And I put my head up. 10 foot gator sitting like right there like she's ready to lunge at me did you see that i almost just got fish See that? Five shots later, I got him. <laughs> Five shots later, we got him. Oh my gosh. That's a long nose gar. And they're actually, some people think that they're not super good to eat, but I'll tell you what, they are very good to eat. Look at them, check them out. Their shell is super hard and they have ridiculously sharp teeth. Like if, you, like if they have the opportunity, they'll bite the junk out of you. All right, that was a gar. We're gonna eat him, guess what? This isn't gonna be a gar video. This is gonna be a something else video. Let's go. Six, seven, eight foot long. What, what's your name? James. This is James, you guys. He's telling me where to catch the gigantor gar. Just don't get, just don't get uh, caught. You know, it is patrolled by little, what do you call oh, it? Oh, is it no fishing? Is it no fishing? Yeah, it's small cups, but it's worth it. Big old gar. Big, like this big around. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> and they're in little ponds. Like, you're like, how the hell is a little big guy? I don't know. Dude. Yeah, for real though, man. You guys better believe we're heading to the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you for real, straight up. That's where you're at. I appreciate it, man. So we're just walking back and I run into that guy, his name is James, and he told us where to, where to, where to clean up on the big gigantor gar. He says six, seven, eight foot. That's hard to believe, but I want to believe it. But we're going to find that definitely. The only thing is, is that he said maybe the fishing there is, uh, it's like a mall. So there's like mall cops and stuff. They might kick you out. Officer. Officer, hang on one second. Do you not see that fish? Give me one second. <laughs> We're gonna do it. <laughs> when he says, so when he says six, seven, eight foot gar, like I'm gonna have to tie a, to like dig some bigger barbs into that thing. Like you saw how hard it was to get that small gar off of that. Like they'll stick on there, but I'm guaranteed gonna drill a hole through that and run a rope through it so I can throw it with a rope on it. Because if this goes into a six foot gar or an eight foot gar, I won't see it ever again. This is a big reservoir and this hill is like 
ridiculous. But look at this. How awesome is this? So the plan is I've seen fish, the fish that we're after, I've seen them line the surface of this before. I want to go up to them, dig them, and I think that we should be good. Let's do it. We gotta creep up on these fish like they're like they're right up on the bank. They should be. And as soon as they see us, they'll boogie off. So we gotta kind of just creep up like right on them. Target species checked off the list, you guys. <laughs> that is a sucker mouth catfish, aka a placostomus, aka I think Floridians call them placos a lot. Um, they started off, look at that thing. It's like super prehistoric and crazy looking. These things started off as a very popular, and they still are, a very popular aquarium fish because they suck the walls of the aquarium like it's like a natural cleansing for it. And they're just super cool looking. But the thing is, People move to Florida, it's too hot for them. They move away, they got a big old aquarium full of fish, they let them go, and because Florida's weather is so tropical and amazing, everything survives. So that's why we have so many invasive species in Florida. Let's go find some more. guys do you think that fish will taste good like i don't know he doesn't look like he might taste good but i have been super surprised by some fish that i didn't think would taste good and i tried them and you know what i truly believe it's about the way you cook them like some fish can taste nasty if you cook them just kind of regular but if you do it the right way some fish can taste super good but check him out guys we got the we got the shelled fish buffet this shell is like rock hard Wait till you see me clean these things. You have to really kind of work with them. He almost got away from us, but we didn't let that happen. The scary thing is that right when I was getting in there, I saw a big old boil right here, like, like an alligator surfacing and going back down. So I'm glad he didn't get too far. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are slowly losing daylight here. So we're gonna pack up and head back, but hey, stay tuned because I'm not sure how or where we're gonna cook this fish, but I can guarantee you that it's gonna be super, super duper awesome. So stay tuned. That's how you call the fish and the birds, you guys. <laughs> What's up, you guys? We're back, and uh, it's the next day now. And we're about to clean those fish and wait till you see how we clean them because those hard shells and those gar and also on the placos, it's like, it's a tough job, but we're gonna do it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the, those fish, okay? All those fish, the gar and the placos, we're gonna cook them right here on this awesome grill and over an open fire. And I couldn't be more excited. So while we're cleaning them, I'm gonna have this, this fire going so that it has time to get good and perfect for the fish. But anyway, come see this. This here, this wood right here, this is fat lighter wood, like lighter, lighter knot wood. 
comes out of a pine tree. The sap, it's a, it's a pine tree that died and the sap all sunk down to the core of that tree. And it makes some of the best kindling and fire starter like of all time. So I was in the woods yesterday, grabbed some of this, I'm about to use it. The boys are out here, so get ready to hear them. Um, hang on, hang on. Find a good piece to show you guys. Okay, look. This is actually, I mean, this is still lighter wood, but it isn't fully um, lighter wood yet. It's like probably halfway. See that like that, that light colored wood? That right there, that dark colored, it's like sappy and it's almost kind of sticky feeling. And it smells like Christmas morning. Amazing. So we're starting our fire with that and I'm actually gonna use a couple of these pieces. Normally you would never use this much, but because that's actually a pretty good piece, just that oranging in there, it's almost like a transparent kind of orange color. That is the best part of it. So we're gonna save that one for later. But that, for example, isn't fully lightered, if you will. So we're gonna use that. liquid all that this tree is probably i mean it's been dead for probably a decade or longer you see all that liquid in there that's like the sap just melting down and it's keeping that fire going even in this wind it's pretty cool do you want to roast marshmallows later yes okay after we cook that fish you can have marshmallows how's that Marshmallows on a stick? Marshmallows on a stick, that's right. Yes! Double your inner fire. Yes. All right, you guys, that fire is good to go. That lighter one right now is slowly burning, catching everything else. It's time to clean those fish. Let's go. Yeah, there's fish in there. Yeah, there's is this, Daddy? There's fish in that bucket. Yeah, this should be. Come check them out. Look. <laughs> gross. You're yeah, gross. Wow, wow, look at the slime, you guys. Look at the slime, though. No, don't touch that. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Grab one of these things. First thing you want to do, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to grab this fish, start right here, right as far as I can get back to where there's still some flesh. Get under one of those plates. And just go straight up. I want to stay as close to the top as I can, but I still want to make sure that I'm staying under the plates. Look at that. It really does just kind of cut up. There's that. I'm going to cut here. You could use a hammer. Watch this. Pull twist a lot of those guts just came out of that fish spray it out real good now i'm gonna just kind of fillet or just kind of scrape off this shell on this one i'm gonna stay right on the inside of the shell and just kind of cut it off just kind of separate it from the meat and it does separate nicely now that I have that shell kind of pulled off a little bit, I'm going to kind of get a hold of that meat and just kind of pull. Look at that. I'm going to kind of rinse all the crap off of it, whatever's on there. Look at that. Just a beautiful hunk of meat around that fish. It's actually super surprising to me how much meat that fish has. The smoke. The fire is roaring. All right, guys, these are the ingredients. You love it or you hate it. Cilantro. A gigantic onion. You got portobello mushrooms, which if you ask me are just some of the most amazing things in the world. Some honey, some gator dun from gator hammock, and some regular salt, and some foil. Let's go. Look, that, that big, that's a Vidalia onion. Straight from a produce stand, straight out of Plant City, Florida. It's going right here, right in that fire. How cool is that? There's our two fish right here, okay? I'll grab some aluminum foil. 
I'm gonna grab a piece of that fish right there. That's actually one whole placostomus. Throw it there. Set it aside for a second. I'm gonna grab something that I love, which is cilantro. I know it's controversial. Just kind of get the cutting. I'm gonna get that right on there. Just not a crazy amount, just like that. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that onion right down the middle on that little knot right there. Just like that. Then on the other side where there's no knot, cut just like the first tiny bit off like that. Uh, peel that first layer off. It's a very small onion, but that's okay, because we don't have too much fish. Then right here. Look at that. Now you have Julian onions. It's gonna go right there. Some salt. Gator done. Boy, shamoy. That's not supposed to be good. <laughs> kind of makes me want to sneeze. A little bit of honey. Clover honey. I don't care, you guys. Look at that. I mean, I don't care what kind of fish it is. There's no way in this world that if you put that on any kind of fish, that it's going to taste bad. I mean, I don't know. Smells good, I ain't even cooked yet. Not in a blazing hot spot. The fire is still pretty high right now because I added some wood. I kind of just like right to the side a little bit for now. And that will cook fairly quickly. Some salt. Salt right on these portobello mushrooms with that olive oil. Olive oil is gonna keep it nice and moist. What, you want some? Want some salt? Lauren's gonna drink the olive oil. Keep your lips off that, you crazy boo-boo. All right, here. Down. I've never done this, but I'm gonna try some honey right on those portobellas. Just a little bit. In case you guys don't know this yet, I love me some honey. Those are gonna go right on a fairly hot spot. They take a little bit to cook. Not too hot, but, but pretty hot. So while we're waiting for our, our food to get done, we'll go ahead and become less white. I feel much better now. <laughs> What's amazing is look at this. The oil is still sitting right there, just kind of sinking, it's like a salty olive oil deliciousness, just kind of sinking, sinking into the mushroom flesh. That fish is probably actually almost done, you guys. So you know your onion's done when it feels kind of soft. It's almost there. The fish, I'd say, is definitely done. It's been about, it's been about 10 minutes. Those mushrooms are gonna be amazing. Wait till you see this fish. Wow. It's done, look. Look how it's flaking. See that? Flaking off right there, kinda? That's how you know it's done. Okay. You guys, you might think I'm crazy when I say this, but it actually tastes super mild. Look, it's like a white meat. I totally expected like a like a muddy like dirt taste. Look at that. I just cut it in half. Look at all the meat. It looks like pork, doesn't it? See that? That one tastes a little bit like catfish. Moment of truth. If hog shine likes it, it's good. There's bones in it, yes. Yeah, so be careful. There are bones in it, so. Okay, I'm ready. 
It's pretty good, right? It does taste like that. It's like surprisingly good. It is good. So look at this, look. Just peel that first layer off. And it's soft and a totally cooked onion inside. Grab that first layer. Hot. That's so good. I bet it, I bet it'd be even better. A little bit of gator hammock on it. That stuff. Look at that stuff. That stuff is so good. It says hot right there. The gator sprinkle is pretty hot. The gator done is, is very mild. Like I would give it to a kid. That's how mild it is. Oh yeah. That is so good. You guys, I want to say thank you. Sorry if my mouth is dirty. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking this video out. It was so fun out there and getting those things. So Pocosmus are everywhere and they're invasive and they're bad for Florida's environment like lake banks and things like that and river banks that kind of destroy them. They burrow and things. So if you can catch them, catch them. They're so good. They're easy to get. You can gig them. You can bow fish them. You can catch them whatever way you want. You can even hand catch them, which I probably will do here shortly. But hey, thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing every single one of you guys in the next one.